So for our children and youth who are here right now, I was going to invite you to come forward, but we've got all kinds of things up here and you'll be coming for the flower ritual, so I'm gonna to have to do this from the pulpit. I really need your help with what I'm about to talk about. So when I ask a question or you know, ask for you to respond, can the kids of all ages and youth please respond, okay? So sometimes all of us are given very big tasks to do. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. yes. Right? Oh yes, some people said. Sometimes tasks that we are asked to do or concepts that we're asked to understand or explain or live into can feel so big that it's actually overwhelming. And it's actually important and helpful at that time to simplify them, to bring them back for the moment to a more manageable size and scope. Like at the start of a new school year, for those of you who started this year, it may be that the teachers might tell you everything you have to learn that year and all of the big assignments that are gonna be due in May and you'll have a new schedule, and your friends aren't necessarily in your same class anymore. Maybe you're even in a new school. That's a lot. That's a lot. And we've all been there. So times like that are when it helps us to remember what matters and to keep it in the moment. It also helps to remember our connections, our friends and our family, our church, and everyone who's here online, in person. It also helps to look around for ways to be kind or helpful to someone else, be that a bug or a family member or a stranger. Because how we act matters. You matter, we all matter. Our words and our actions make a difference. And more often than not, we don't even realize it. For good and for ill. As Alan said, our ministry theme this year is interconnectedness. And that is a very big thing. Because everything, everything is interconnected. Everything. We're connected to dust mites and spiders and butterflies. We are connected to our friends and our family, our community, this church, other UU churches, other churches in town, our schools. I could go on and on and on and on. And the more we think about interconnection and learn about it and feel it, the bigger we realize it is. It's a big truth with lots of implications, which means a lot of things happen because of that truth. And it might feel at times overwhelming or like it's just simply too much and easier to just think about what's for dinner. That's okay, but we need each other to go just a little deeper and wider into the reality of this interconnectedness if we are to be the people we're called to be. So to bring it into a more manageable size, I'm going to start our year with a story. And I am so glad that our children are with us so that I can choose the story that first taught me about interconnectedness. It's a classic story that was written 71 years ago by a man named Elwyn Brooks White. People know him as E.B. White. Do you know that he lived in Maine? among other places. E.B. White wrote essays and important articles in many news publications, The New Yorker, Harper's Magazine, and, and many other places. And in reviewing his life, it's clear that he actually had consistent themes that he wrote about again and again and again. He wrote in defense of individual consciousness. He wrote about the freedom of the press. He wrote about the rights of minorities. 
and he wrote about world unity. Sounds like a Unitarian Universalist, doesn't it? He wasn't a UU. However, the one, and I quote from a book, the one God that he did have in human form was actually a very famous Unitarian. Anyone guess? Ah, close, Henry David Thoreau. He found great peace and meaning in Thoreau's writings. However, in addition to his news writings and a little bit of poetry and essays, E.B. Wright wrote three children's books, Stuart Little, The Trumpet of the Swan, and Charlotte's Web, which is how I first learned about interconnectedness. And it broke my heart open and it helped make me who I am today. I'm very serious. How many of you know the story of Charlotte's Web? It's, as I said, one of my favorites. It's a story about a child named Fern, a pig named Wilbur, a spider named Charlotte. All week long, my dog was like, what? Why do you keep saying my name? As I was practicing and writing, Charlotte, Charlotte, she's like, what? Um, it's also about a lot of other barn creatures and people. Now on the surface, it's a story about how Fern, this child, and then Charlotte, the spider, save Wilbur the pig's life. And that is true. Let me tell us all a secret, though. It's actually a story about interconnectedness. And I think E.B. White knew that. Sometimes we hear things best in simple form. It's a story about the interconnectedness of community friendship, and love in action. It's a story about life. There are many lessons in it, and there are three of them I want us to hold up today. The first lesson is you, we, you are never alone. Never. You, we are surrounded by connections, interconnections, and communities of all kinds. That's the first lesson. The second lesson is that we can always do something to help. Words matter. Kindness may save someone's life. And the third lesson is that unlikely friends are some of the best. So to be open to friends wherever we go, so I just want to go through the story quickly and look for these lessons and think about your own lives and think about interconnectedness as we hear the Barnes story. It starts with Fern, at that time an eight-year-old, who loved animals and lived on a farm with her family. One day, Fern learns that her father is planning on killing the runt of their newest litter of pigs. A runt is the smallest of the babies, and sometimes they don't get enough to eat. So it was sort of a thing that sometimes a farmer might put them out of their misery. But Fern put her foot down and said, no, there is no way you're killing this pig just because he's little. So she wrapped the baby pig in a blanket, named him Wilbur, and fed him with a bottle until he could eat on his own and after some months, Fern's father sold Wilbur to his brother, and Wilbur went to live in a barnyard with a lot of other animals. Fern went to visit him every day. Has that ever happened in your life? Someone had to move to a different place, and you went to visit? It matters. So Fern became friends with all the other animals, including a spider named Charlotte. Well, it turns out that even with all these other animals around him, Wilbur was lonely. He didn't want food, the book says, which most people think that's all a pig needs. He wanted love. He wanted a friend. And I'll tell you something, we all want a friend. One day, the spider Charlotte, from her web that was over where he stayed, Wilbur, she told Wilbur, I'll be your friend. 
She said, do you want a friend, Wilbur? I'll be a friend to you. I've watched you all day and I like you. You're never alone. We are surrounded by connections and community. Now here's the thing, Wilbur appreciated Charlotte's offer, but he wasn't so sure. He didn't like spiders, you see. Spiders, there was some unconscious bias going on in Wilbur about <laughs> spiders. And Wilbur said, I've got a new friend, but what a gamble friendship is. Charlotte is fierce, brutal, scheming, bloodthirsty, everything I don't like. How can I learn to like her? Wilbur was merely suffering the doubts and fears that often come with finding a new friend. And in good time, he was to discover he was mistaken about Charlotte. Underneath her rather bold and cruel exterior, she had a kind heart. And she was to prove herself loyal and true to the very end. Eventually, Wilbur became friends with all the animals, the geese, the sheep, even Templeton, the rat. Unlikely friends are some of the best. Be open to friends wherever you go. One day, all the animals realize Wilbur is still likely to be killed after he gets fat enough for meat, and it bothered them a lot, especially Wilbur, who didn't want that to happen. <laughs> so Charlotte decides she has to do something that's in her power to save Wilbur. She's not gonna let this happen. So she thought about who she was, what her abilities were, and she decided to write words in her spider web for the people who own the barn to see. Then they would know how special Wilbur was. People believe almost anything they see in print. <laughs> we can always do something to help. Words matter. Kindness may save someone's life. And she was right. People did believe what they saw in print and what they saw written about Wilbur in a spider web. Charlotte wrote words in the web over a period of time and people thought it was a miracle because you see, they didn't think that spiders could do that. So over the months she wrote first, some pig, it's great. The farmer who was gonna kill the pig looked at that and said, oh, that's right, that is some pig. And then terrific, radiant, and humble. Not only did other people believe what Charlotte the spider put in her web, but Wilbur did too. Words matter. Wilbur tried his best to be everything that Charlotte wrote about him. It wasn't too long before the people knew they could never kill Wilbur. He was too special. Charlotte's words and actions mattered. And they remind me of something that Ralph Waldo Emerson, another Unitarian someone mentioned, said once. He said, you cannot do a kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late. Well, time went on and Wilbur got very, he got famous. He went to fairs, people came from all over to see this pig. But as time went on, Charlotte also got older. One day she wove this beautiful sack where she put hundreds, hundreds of eggs for spiders. And that meant that even after she died, her children and grandbabies and their babies could always be Wilbur's friend. That's when my heart broke open. Ralph Waldo Emerson also said something about friendship I believe is true. He said, the glory of friendship is the spiritual inspiration that comes to one when you discover that someone else believes in you and is willing to trust you with a friendship. I wonder, has anyone noticed anything different in the sanctuary today? other than this. <laughs> oh, does everyone see it's our web? It's our church web. Can anyone see what it says? Some church. Some church. <laughs> of course, some church we are. <laughs> Terrific, radiant, humble. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> It is a reminder of the truths about interconnectedness and an invitation 
to remember you are never alone. You are surrounded by connections and community of all kinds. We can always do something to help. Words matter. Kindness may save someone's life. Unlikely friends are some of the best. Be open to friends wherever you go. Amen. <laughs>